So Glenn Seaton moves back to his pit area as we pick up on a guy who can really belt a car around uh, any circuit. And he'll belt the living daylights out of the Benson and Hedges car, and that's Alan Jones driving number 20. The 1980 World Formula One champion. Enjoying another stint here in a touring car. Mm -hmm. Haven't seen much of him this year behind the wheel. But he's shown plenty of speed. He was very quick at Sandown in the 500 kilometre race earlier in September. Gone rod straight. This is the warm up lap for Alan Jones. Win Percy, who of course will be running uh, one of the two Holden Commodores in the two E's 1000 tomorrow, joins us. This is a guy who shouldn't have any difficulty coming up with a quick one win. I shouldn't think so, Mike. I must admit, I think uh, Mount Panorama is one of the most difficult circuits in the world to actually screw yourself up, go out and do one really tidy good lap. It's a circuit that you need to settle into to build a rhythm. You have to be smooth, get aggressive, and you're off on the wall, as we've already seen this morning. Mm -hmm. Here comes the Jones boy, green flag at the ready. The second of the Benson and Hedges Sierras. AJ coming up to take the green flag now. This man finished third in the race last year with Colin Bond, changed camps in 1989, and off on a hot qualifier lap now. Let's see what he can produce. Seaton with a 20.52. Competed in 116 Formula One Grand Prix events. Six pole positions, 12 wins, and a world championship. A guy with enormous experience in touring cars, Group C sports cars, and single seaters. First came to the mountain in 1981 in a Holden Commodore. Actually, talking to Alan, I get the feeling he's enjoying his touring car racing more and more as he gets involved in it. He's enjoying this. It's a very quick lap. Looks very good. Never short of aggression. No, coming up to two, he's up, it's a bit wide. A little bit of aggression's worth about the second and a half a lap around here. Well, anybody that followed this man's Formula One career would know that he can turn it on at will. And he's usually... Coming down now, he's very quick across here. He's certainly using as much of the black stuff as he can find. Mm -hmm. Down towards the S's. He's partnered with 1967 World Formula One champ Denny Holm at 13.81. That's a good split at the top of the hill. And this is a very good driving combination in this car. Down to Forest Elbow. Coasted out towards the wall. Looked like he lost a little bit of speed through Forest Elbow. Sort of wound up nicely now, that. Beautiful speed shot, halfway down uh, Conrod Strait. Zips through over the top of the hill. And here he comes. Box to run 154. Ooh, he's giving it plenty down there. Jones about to exit uh, Caltex Chase beneath the Bridgestone Bridge now. Box still running. 211. This is going to be reasonably quick. Here he comes. Checker at the ready for Alan Jones in the Benson and Hedger Sierra. Here he comes across the stripe now. 220.63. So just slightly slower than the seat and time. It looked pretty good in a couple yeah. of places, but I suspect that uh, Alan may have lost a little bit of time through the left hander at Forest Elbow, and I don't think the car really bit there the way that he wanted to get. Uh, the car to go round. It actually looked as if he went in that dreadful understeer situation. You have to feather slightly then, and you've lost a couple of RPM the whole Conrad straight. So Glenn Seaton's still the man that they're chasing at present. And Richard Hay now to talk with Alan Jones. Alan, a 220.63, a veteran of more than a few qualifying laps. How does that one compare? Slower. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, second quickest, you're not very happy at all with that. Huh? Well, there's only been one other car, so <laughs> I think I'll probably fall back a bit. No, I wasn't terribly happy with that. I think I was probably a little bit too cautious, to be honest. 